What if I told you that light could influence every living cell in your body? That you could manipulate your health, your mood, your sleep, and your productivity? When I was younger, we spent many of, our, uh, many, many of my waking hours um, outdoors. Uh, we woke with the sun. We were quick to get outside and spend our day playing. Um, it's, uh, we, and we really didn't want to come back in until the sun started to set and um, we needed to get ready for uh, our evening. Uh, we had a regulated television time, uh, our meal, and we got cleaned up and, and ready for sleep. It's, uh, but as we grew older and uh, started going to school, um, you know, more and more of our time is spent inside under artificial light. Um, it begins in our learning environment as we're young. However, during our beginning of our schooling, uh, we spend a great deal of time outside still with our recess and uh, also um, with PE. Now, it's no secret that when children can go outside and begin playing and expelling some of their excess energy that they can come in with a new, renewed ability to retain information and learn. This is uh, partly due to the you know, getting out this extra energy, but it's also while they're outside, they're absorbing this natural sunlight. This natural sunlight is a, is a stimulant for us. And it actually um, relaxes our brain and allows us to receive and retain this information at a, at a higher rate. Um, it's, uh, but as we grow older and we spend more and more time in this controlled environment with this artificial light, and uh, it's here where uh, we begin to start to cram in more and more things that we need to do inside of our days. And we really start to lose balance with, uh, with the universe. Um, really, light is such a founding principle for the way we live our lives. And, and uh, it, it does, it keeps us in this, in this perfect balance. Just as important as light is the darkness. And uh, we've, we've really lost touch with that in, uh, in modern day society. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's in this where we really start to have um, a multitude of problems. Uh, what we start to do is um, lose our regular sleeping patterns, which then we don't have the energy to wake up and face the following day with the, uh, the energy that we need, and slowly we, we somewhat um, deteriorate our, our abilities. Uh, also, we spend a great deal of time under this artificial light, which is actually the light particles themselves are a bit supercharged. So instead of um, the surrounding area being able to absorb this energy naturally, it, it hits it with such force that it actually bounces off of everything. So our eyes are not only trying to take in this information, um, but it's also trying to block out all of this excess light. It's, uh, it really puts a lot of stress on our optic system. And if you can imagine, we're 80% visual. 80% of the information that we take in is through our eyes, and that's how we interact with the world around us. And these images that we take in are affecting 25% of our brain. So you could imagine if we start to irritate and subject ourselves to harsh lighting, how it's, it's going to play a major effect in, how, in our ability to work, enjoy our lives. Um, you know, the most common lighting uh, used in the world today, the fluorescent lighting, is, um, is the strongest of uh, you know, these supercharged particles that we're subjecting ourselves to. Um, it's, uh, um, I think, in a way, now with this newfound knowledge and LED technology and being able to really control this and understand um, a little bit more about our physiology and how this light is affecting us, that uh, we can have a vast improvement of the majority of our indoor environments we interact in. Um, you know, for instance, in the, in the morning, we have this blush blue light um, of the sunrise. Well, this is our natural coffee. Um, this is a stimulant for us. Um, many of us rely on coffee as a stimulant. However, it, it's not a stimulant at all. What it's simply doing is just blocking out the receptor signals to our brains, telling us that we need rest. You know, instead of simply by suggesting or sub subjecting ourselves to the right intensity and the right color of light, it, it actually will kick our bodies into gear and, the, and the, it, it will last longer, it will affect us for longer than coffee itself. Um, and actually as you come down off of this natural high, this natural stimulant, then it's, 
it's a great time to take your coffee before you get into the midday. The midday is, um, is my favorite time. You know, this is where we're, we're at our fastest firing rate. Um, the, the easiest way I can explain this is it's kind of like our computers and the internet speed. Uh, you can have a wonderfully running machine, amazing machine, and you hook it up to dial-up internet, and your machine is not going to perform at its maximum capacity. It can still take in the information and process it with speed, but it's going to send and receive the signals at a much slower rate. Well, that's essentially what poor lighting does for us. Uh, it, it is dial-up internet for us. Um, we're still able to process the information, but it, it, we're not optimizing our, our, our ability. Um, and uh, then, you know, we get in a little bit more into the uh, late afternoon, um, and this is sort of our, um, our natural mental braking system. This is where we start to slow down and uh, really reflect upon our day and begin to prepare ourselves for regenerative rest. And um, I think more and more in our society, as it speeds up and we have more things we're trying to accomplish within a given time, uh, many of us, uh, this, is, this is where we're, we're posing the biggest problems for ourselves is, is this entertainment. You know, more and more uh, we have bright, backlit uh, devices that we're sticking in our faces right before we go to bed. This is essentially that blue light. We're, we're telling our brains that it's 6 o'clock in the morning and it's time to wake up. And what we're doing is we're putting ourselves in a state of agitation right before we're trying to get this regenerative rest that we all need so much. And uh, there's a lot of simple features that are out there because of this ability that we have to control our lighting, but m many don't know of it. You know, simply triple clicking your device can invert your screen for nighttime reading and you're, and you're not sending these mixed signals to, uh, to your body at the wrong, the wrong periods of time. Uh, you know, this is uh, a problem that many face um, but no one more than uh, the astronauts aboard the International Space Station that are circling the Earth 15 times a day. They have a sunrise or sunset every 45 minutes. Um, and if, if you could imagine how intense this environment is and how important sleep is, but many astronauts are, are having more and more problems with insomnia. Um, and because of this, NASA realized the problem and, and what they've done is actually um, converted the lighting inside the space station um, so where it actually mimics a sunrise and sunset as if we're here on Earth and kind of keeps them in rhythm and really uh, allows them to perform at a higher level because they're getting the proper rest they need in order to uh, um, keep their bodies running properly. Um, so I guess, I guess really uh, I'd say what's most important is uh, understanding that we do have this wonderful new ability to choose specific color temperatures that can help our children learn, uh, our hospitals um, heal, uh, and um, improve our quality of life. Um, but really, and more so, we just need to, to realize to not abuse ourselves and uh, take advantage of our uh, freedom of lighting uh, at all hours and, and really um, realize how important sleep is for, uh, for, our, for our bodies. Thank you guys for having me.